hello welcome to today's class so in today's class we are going to be talking about a concept in material science called the miller indices now what is the miller index all about by definition the miller indices is a group of number used to indicate the orientation of planes and direction of planes in a crystal structure they are usually symbolized by hkl and enclosed in a parenthesis without comma so you usually can see something like this h k l and they are always enclosed in a bracket or in a parenthesis without separating these um, values by a comma so this is actually what the miller index is all about so we simply use this to represent planes and directions in a given crystal now what is plane the planes and the directions are obtained from the miller index how do we find the planes? The planes are obtained from the Miller index by obtaining their reciprocals. So each of the reciprocals stands for the intercepts in the x, y, and z axis. For instance, let's say I have this to be my Miller index. Okay, this is now my Miller indices. Okay, this is now my Miller indices. And I want to find the plane corresponding to this Miller indices. The next thing I have to find is intercept of the planes okay on in three dimension intercepts of the planes in three dimensions okay now what are these intercepts of planes first of all intercept on the x-axis since we said three dimension it means that i have to have an intercept in the x in the y and in the z direction so these are map these are now going to become my plane obtained from the miller index now obtained from miller indices now x is now intercept intercept of the plane becomes x is equal to one all over what h the inverse of the first term in the miller index okay x equals one all over h next up y is equal to one all over um one all over k okay so i have here y equals one all over k and then finally z equals one all over l these three terms are what makes up um, the planes obtained from miller in this so which means these planes can now be written as x okay y and z we can transpose this to simply be what x stands for one all over h one all over h y stands for one all over k so you have one all over k and z stands for one all over l i have here one all over l this becomes my plane okay obtained from the miller index so the planes and the directions are usually obtained from the miller index now what is direction direction is simply a line plotted from the origin of the structure or from the origin of the cube that makes an angle perpendicular that makes an angle of 90 degrees to each of these planes plotted from the miller index so if i draw a line from the origin of the planes okay from the origin of the structure or the cube which is which makes an angle of 90 degrees to the plane that have been applied from the Miller index, then we call that direction. Now, all directions are enclosed in a squared bracket. So I will usually have something like this, H, K, L. So this is now my direction, okay? Direction of the given Miller index. So all directions are enclosed in a squared bracket. So take note of these, these um, notations. Directions are enclosed in the, in the square bracket why the planes of course are enclosed in parentheses okay um same thing as the miller index in this manner all right now if i consider that the inverse of the miller index gives me the plane it also means conversely that the inverse of each of these planes will give me back my miller indices okay so it, it means if i'm given a plane of one all over So it means if I'm given a plane of x, y, and z, this is now my plane. If I'm given this plane, I can also transpose this plane towards a Miller index by simply taking the inverse of each of their positions. So 1 over x, okay, 1 all over y, and 1 all over z, obviously will give me my Miller indices. Okay, this will give me my Miller indices. So, the inverse of the planes also gives you the what Miller index, whereas the inverse of the Miller index gives you what the plane. So that's just the basic idea behind Miller index. Now let's use 
what we've obtained so far and try to draw some structures. Let's say we are given to draw the plane, draw the 0, 0, 1 plane, 1, 0, 0 plane, and 0, 1, 0 plane. Let's say we are given to draw these planes, all right, using the ideas we've gotten now so far in Miller in this. Now, it is important for you to know that you've been asked to draw the planes 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now, these planes you're asked to draw, these are called Miller indices. So, you're asked to draw the planes from each of these Miller indices. So, this is a Miller index, this is a Miller index, this is a Miller index. So, you're simply being asked to draw the planes from each of these Miller indices. So, if you pick out the first Miller index, consider the indices, consider the Miller indices 0, 0, 1. You have this. So this is now a Miller indices and you're up to what? Draw the plane from this index. So what do you do? Um, remember, to draw these planes, you have to find intercept of the planes. Alright, so you consider intercept, okay, intercept of planes. Alright, so what are these intercepts? You have intercept on the x-axis and I said intercept on the x-axis simply means 1 all over h. Remember, for this given Miller index, this stands for h, this stands for k, and this stands for l. You have this in this manner. That simply implies that intercept on the x is simply, remember, 1 all over h, and that's equal to 1 all over. h in this concept is what? 0. So you have here to be 0. So it means that this is equal to what? Infinity. 1 divided by 0 gives you infinity. So this simply implies that h, um, that the x-intercept, okay is equal to infinity you have that next up you find intercept on the y-axis which is now the reciprocal of what k and k also here is zero so this becomes one all over k which is equal to one all over zero and of course one over zero remains infinity this also implies that intercept on the y-axis is simply what infinity and finally you find your intercept on the z-axis which is one all over l and L stands for what? 1 in this given Miller index. L stands for 1. This, is, this becomes 1 all over 1, which is equal to 1. So this implies that intercept on the z-axis is equal to what? 1. It's equal to 1, sorry. Alright, so you have this. It's equal to 1. Okay. Alright, so it means now that the plane we are drawing, plane is now equal to, um, we said planes are x, y, and z. So this is equal to what? x, remember, the x intercept is infinity. You put it down, infinity. The y intercept is also infinity. You put it down, infinity. And the z intercept is 1. You put it down, 1. So you simply have this to be your plane. Now, this infinity simply means that x is parallel, y is also parallel to what? z. So, the x plane and the y plane are all parallel to z, or you can say conversely that the z plane is parallel to what? Um, the y plane and the x plane, okay? Since the z plane has a value and the y plane and the x plane does not have a value, it means that the z plane is parallel to both x and the y plane. But how do you draw this? You start with your structure. Of course, you make a simple cubic structure in this manner okay a simple cubic structure so this cubic structure represents um, your planes in three dimension not forgetting this structure represents your planes in three dimension so you can call anywhere i can call this my y axis this is now my x axis and this is my z as so not minding they can take any orientation this can be your x this can be your y and this can be your z this can be your z this can be your y and this can be your x since they are all orthogonal they can take any direction now in this cubic structure it is called a unit cell and what is a unit cell it simply means that their distances apart are all units which is one so distance from here to this place obviously is one distance from here to this place is one distances apart of from one another from the origin is simply one so it can never be greater than one this simply means that plotting any plane from the miller index can never be up to one 
can never be greater than one it can be up to one but it can never be greater than one so because this is just a unit cell and each distances from the origin are what one uh, meters apart another thing i want you to know is that if this is my origin of course if i'm moving up this is positive y if i'm moving from the origin to the right is positive x if i'm moving from the origin to this place it's also positive z also apart from calling here my origin i can also call here my origin notice that i can move up here positive y I can move in this direction positive x but if i'm moving backwards it becomes negative z because i have to now move against the direction of the plane for z also i can also call here my origin okay so every node of course take note every node in a three-dimensional plane automatically becomes an origin so i can call here also my origin which means if i'm moving backwards here it becomes negative if i'm moving downwards from here it becomes negative but if i'm moving in this way it is what positive direction of z and same thing with here and here all right now i want to plot the infinity infinity one plane this means that the intercept on the x-axis does not exist and this is my x line it doesn't exist also intercept on the y-axis does not exist this is my y line it doesn't exist now what next is the intercept we have intercept on the z-axis is one and i've told you that this is a unit cell and for unit cell each distances from the origin to this place are what one meters apart so this is also one meters this is one meters this height is also one meter this is one meters just like that so i want to intercept z it means from the origin this is z so from here to this point is simply what one okay so this becomes my intercept you can um hi highlight there a bit this becomes my intercept on the z also if i pick here as my origin that means moving in this direction is also what positive direction of z remember z here is positive plus one so which means we are moving in the positive direction so if this is my origin i can also move here i have there to be what my z which is one meters from the origin similarly um <clears throat> if i pick here as my origin okay remember if i pick here as my origin x intercept does not exist y intercept does not exist which means i only have z intercept moving from here to this point i will also highlight here this becomes my z and finally if i pick here as my origin x intercept does not exist y intercept does not exist i only have x i only have z so i can move from here to this point and i've covered z which is also what one meter so these four points trace them together these four points trace them together okay these four points gives me the um infinity infinity one plane so you can shade you can shade so this simply means that this plane is now on the z direction this is now the z plane and this plane is what parallel to y axis this is my y axis it means that if i'm tracing the y axis up it can never cut across with this other y axis so it is parallel to the y axis it is also parallel to the x axis it also means that if i'm tracing in the x direction okay this is my x plane so if i'm tracing in the x direction it can never also cut across it can never cross the x plane they can never meet so they are parallel to one another so which means like i said earlier infinity simply means parallel so it means that this plane is parallel to both x and y axis which means this plane can never cut y it can never cut, cut x so if i'm moving in the x direction they will just continue to go like this till infinity and they can never intersect each other if i'm also moving in the y direction this is also y direction upwards like this it can never okay let me shade this up a bit it can never intersect with the um y line something like this so if i'm moving upwards as well it can never intersect with the y axis same thing with the x axis so this is now called the um one the zero zero one plane okay this is now called the zero zero one plane or you can simply see infinity infinity one plane is still the same thing all right so you have this so let's draw this second plane second plane says we should find um the zero the one zero zero plane all right so let's draw the one zero zero plane and see how it looks like so i will still come back from here let's find the intercepts now <coughs> okay all right so let's now consider the 100 plane so in this case i have my h to be one this is zero and of course l is also zero let's consider the 100 plane remember next thing first thing to do is to find the intercept intercept x is simply one over h 
and h stands for what one in this case now this becomes one all over one one all over one which is equal to one so this simply implies that intercept on the x is actually what one next is to find intercept on the y which is one over k and k there is equal to what zero so that means one over k becomes one all over zero which will also give us what infinity so this simply implies that the y intercept is equal to what infinity finally one over l which is z intercept and l is also what zero from here so you simply have this to be one all over zero which is also what infinity so this simply implies that the z plane is intercepted as infinity all right so which means we are now to plus our planes now become which is xyz remember x now becomes one y is infinity and z is infinity so this simply means that this plane which is the x plane is parallel to the y plane and the z plane so which means the x plane cannot come in contact with the y plane and the z plane at any point their lines are parallel to one another now how do you draw this so i will still do this from this diagram okay i will still do this from this diagram um <clears throat> i want to plot this plane remember intercept on the x-axis so which means from origin the x-axis in this case we have positive you have one all right so since it's one and it is positive you move from the origin and locate the x-axis i have told you that each distance apart is simply what one meter so which means one is simply from here to this point this is now the x plane all right so since there is no intercept on the z and on the y it means from origin to y does not exist also from origin to z does not also exist so we simply have this next up if i call this my origin move from the origin to locate x remember origin to y does not exist origin to z does not exist i can only find x which is at this point also if i call here my origin origin to z does not exist but origin to x exists which is from here to this point so i can call here my x um similarly if i call here my origin remember origin to z does not exist origin to y does not exist but then this is origin to x which is one i can call here my origin so these four points trace these four points together okay trace these four points together and you can highlight okay you can highlight this this now becomes the one zero zero plane or you can simply say one infinity infinity plane okay this now becomes so this means that this plane exists only in the x direction and the x direction can never cut across with the y direction so if i trace this plane upwards okay if i trace this plane upwards trace this plane upwards their y direction can never intercept each other okay this is the y direction of this same plane this is the y direction of this same plane but they can never cross each other they keep on moving and they move like that in parallel same thing happens if i trace them in the z direction this is the z direction of this plane this direction also if i trace this forward you see that this and this can never intercept at any point so they are parallel to one another so this plane can only this plane only exists in where the x um direction so which is what we have here all right so having talked about this let's just draw some few um i will leave this to you i will leave this final one to you just try and see what you can make out of it but let's draw some um some a little bit complex planes okay let's draw some complex planes and see how it looks all right so let's say we're given to draw the planes of the miller indices three two one 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 and uh two two zero so let's say we're given to draw these planes okay so we've been given the miller indices so take note they might not say draw the planes of the miller indices they might say draw the planes without putting the word miller indices so have it in mind like i told you from beginning that the miller indices or the planes lies in the miller indices so there cannot be a plane which has a value up to three it's not possible i've said that the cubic cell has just a unit structure which means their distance apart from the origin is one meters so even you seeing three here tells you a lot already that it's not possible to have three in the cubic cell okay so which means this automatically becomes a miller index all right so we we'll consider the first case now let's consider um the indices okay consider the index which is three two and one we have this i've said the first step is to find the intercept from both x y and z direction that's how to get your planes 
So we'll find the intercepts now. Intercept of planes. Intercepts of planes. Okay. So the x-intercept, remember, is equal to 1 all over h. So not forgetting, this is my h, this is my k, and this is my l in the Miller ND. So the x-intercept is 1 all over h. This is equal to 1 all over. We know now that h is equal to what? 3 from this Miller ND. So this becomes 1 all over 3. Okay. So, so this implies that the x-intercept is equal to 1 all over 3. Next up, you find the y-intercept. And y-intercept, remember, is 1 all over k. And from the Miller in this structure here, k is equal to 2. You have here to be 1 all over 2. So this simply implies that the y-intercept is equal to 1 all over 2. And finally, the z-intercept is equal to 1 all over l. And if you check from the question, the L there is simply equal to what? 1. Alright, so this becomes 1 all over 1, which implies that the z-intercept is equal to 1 divided by 1, obviously is 1. So we have this. Alright, so you might want to cross-check. 1 all over 3 is approximately 0 0.3. You have here to be 0 0.3. Okay. 1 all over 2 is approximately 0 0.5. And of course, one remains one. So which means 0 0.3, like I said, is less than one. So you can see how the plane transpose now. Uh, the x-intercept is less than one. The y-intercept is less than one. And of course, the z-intercept is equal to one. So the, the planes can never exceed one. Okay, the planes can never exceed one. All right, so let's now plot our planes and see. So remember, you draw your simple cubic structure. Okay, you draw your simple cubic structure. You have this. And you have this, okay? You draw a simple cubic structure and you have this. So label them your directions now. I'll call this my y direction. I'll call this my x direction. And I'll call this my z direction. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, like I told you, they are all what unit planes, which means each distance apart are one meters. Now, the intercept on the x, okay, let's combine this now. This becomes my plane. The plane I'm drawing now becomes x is simply 1 all over 3. So this is 1 divided by 3. y is 1 divided by 2. And z is simply 1. Take note, you don't split this place with a comma. It becomes wrong. Once you split with a comma, you've gotten it wrong. Remain, if the plane remains like this after getting the intercepts. Okay, it remains in this manner. This becomes your plane without a comma. Same thing with the Miller in this as well. Alright, so from the origin, this is now intercept on the x. This is intercept on the y, and this is intercept on the z. Notice that 1 over 3 is less than 1 over 2. And if I'm saying from the origin to this point is 1 meter, so it means somewhere around here becomes the middle, which is 1 all over 2, or 0 0.5. And therefore, 0 0.3 will be somewhere, somewhere around here. Okay, so you have to be very careful with your measurement as well. Since it's not accurate, you have to be very careful. If from the origin to this point is 1 meter, this is the x direction now. It means that the middle becomes 1 all over 2, which is 0 0.5. So y, x intercept is at 1 over 3, which is around 0 0.3. So we can simply call that intercept there. Next up is the y intercept. Y intercept is 1 over 2. So this is my y. Distance from the origin to this point is 1 meters. So 1 over 2 is somewhere around the middle. So my y intercept is around here, 1 all over 2. This is 1 all over 3. And finally, my z-intercept is at 1. So remember, this is the maximum value, 1. So it means from the origin to this place remains 1. And I have this. So it means now that these planes are simply connect all the points together. So you draw from y, connecting to z. Draw from y, connecting to x. Draw from x, connecting to z, okay? You have this to be the plane. So you can shade. This becomes the given plane you are asked to draw. This is now the plane. Now, what is the idea behind direction? Okay, so let's say in this question we are asked to indicate the direction because we talk about that Miller indices conveys both um, planes and direction in it. Now, how do we plot the direction? Direction is simply a line drawn from the origin which is perpendicular to the planes that you've drawn so far. So this is now our, um, this is our plane, our 1 over 2, 1 over 3 and 1 plane. So this plane is simply 1 over 3, 1 over 2 and 1 
plain or you can simply use the notation of the Miller indices 3 2 um, 1 3 2 1 plane okay is still the same thing you will not be wrong to put this it means you've transposed the Miller index into what a plane now what is the direction direction is simply a line drawn from the origin to that is perpendicular to each of these planes so if I draw a line from the origin to this point this line is at 90 degrees to this plane so this becomes the direction and you used you use a square bracket to indicate a direction so let me trace this line out a bit to somewhere here this becomes my direction with a square bracket i'll simply have direction of three two one plane so i have this this becomes how i represent my direction i can also plot this direction from the origin to this face so it doesn't mean that it must be this so it doesn't mean that it must be that so i can plot it to this face so far it's at 90 degrees to that face no problem um so far it's perpendicular to that face okay this can be my direction and close in a squared bracket three two one direction so this is my direction okay so simply a line drawn from the origin which is perpendicular to the plane that gives you the direction but this becomes the miller indice of this given um, plane okay let's consider the next plane next plane is a one 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 plane let's consider these indices now when it is one one and one so you have one 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 so the same thing, um, the x-intercept becomes 1 all over h, and h in this case now is 1. So you have 1 all over 1, which still remains 1. Okay, sorry I'm joining all this together because I need to save time. So this becomes 1 as well. Alright, also the y-intercept is 1 over k. And K also from the Miller index is there is also one. You have this to be one all over one, which means Y intercept is equal to one. The Z intercept is one over L. L from this structure is also what one over one. Okay, so this becomes Z equal to one. So this becomes now my plane. The planes are now one, one, one plane. Okay, the planes are one, one, one plane. So I'm going to draw the same plane in this direction or in this particular cube okay i'll draw the planes together all right so how or how do you draw the one 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 plane remember this becomes your x intercept it cuts x at one and from the origin this is x and this is maximum one you have it there also it cuts y at one from the origin this is y and it is maximum at this point one so it cuts here as well and also it cuts z at one from the origin from the origin this is my z and it cuts it at one so i have something like this so all i need to do is simply join these points together join these points together so i have something like this okay i hope you can see this clearly i have something like this sorry i'm drawing them together because i'm trying to save time but i hope it's visible enough so i have something like this they become the plane one 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 so you might wish to shade Okay, let me shade in this manner. You might wish to shade. So this becomes the plane. Okay. This becomes the plane. One, one, one. So always to draw the direction now, you also pull from the origin, draw a line which acts perpendicular to each of these planes. Okay, so this line is at 90 degrees to this plane. This becomes my direction. This line is at 90 degrees to this plane. This becomes my direction. So draw this line out a bit. You have direction of one, one, one plane. And close it in a square bracket. Okay, like I said earlier, it's not a must, it must be on this particular face. You can always draw the origin from the origin, draw the line to where any of the um, plane. So I can draw from the origin to this plane. It doesn't also change. So far it is at 90 degrees. This surface or the plane itself, you have this plane one, one, one. Plane. so this becomes my direction all right so that's it on that plane so let's do the final plane before we move over to talking about the negative miller indices okay so let's move to the final um miller index given to us the final plane is two two zero okay so consider the two two zero plane consider the two two zero plane two two zero plane 
okay all right so the x intercept is 1 over h remember from the 2 to 0 plane now your h becomes 2 so 1 over h simply becomes 1 on over 2 it means that the x intercept is at 1 divided by 2 also y intercept is 1 over k and from the plane given as well um, k there stands for what 2 so this becomes also 1 all over 2 which implies that the y intercept is at 1 divided by 2 and finally the z plane is 1 over l l is 0 from here 2 to 0 so l is simply 0 this becomes 1 all over 0 and hence l is at um sorry 1 over 0 is infinity so which means z is at infinity so i have this so my plane becomes now my plane becomes now x plane is 1 over 2 this is the x plane 1 all over 2 y plane also 1 over 2 and the z plane is at infinity so let's plot these planes and their direction and see i'm going to wipe this now all right so you start by plotting your simple cubic structure okay plot your simple your simple cubic structure okay i have something like this okay so i call here always my z i call here my y direction and i call here my x direction <coughs> so i want to plot these planes on the x axis it intercepts at 1 over 2 and i said this is a simple cubic structure which means it has unit parts so from the origin to this point is 1 from the origin to any point at all is 1 meter so if from here to here is 1 and it is causing the cutting the x plane at middle which is 1 over 2 it means it's somewhere around here this is 1 all over 2 at the middle of the x plane also it cuts the y plane at 1 over 2 as well so this is the y plane 1 over 2 is also the middle so somewhere around here 1 divided by 2 but on the z plane it is completely what 0 infinity so it means that the x and y plane are at infinity or are parallel towards the z plane they can never cross check or they can never cross paths with the z plane so if I join these two parts together, I will have something like this. If I join these two parts together, I will have something like this. But it doesn't end there. If I also call here my origin, if I call here my origin, that means from here to here also gives me what? Distance in the X. And remember X is, um, remember X is one meter, okay? From here to x and remember that x is one meters apart but from the intercept here intercept on x is one over two which means it occurs somewhere at the middle so you have this to be one all over two in the x also this is my origin now this is now your y remember from here to this point gives me y and y is one meters from the origin but from the intercept there it is at one over two so you have it to be somewhere around here which is the middle one divided by two also join what these planes together so i simply have something like this so notice now that these two planes are parallel to one another so i can decide to join the y axis to the y axis and also join the x axis to the x axis so i have formed a plane like this this plane is parallel to the z plane it can never cut the z plane okay so if i shade this all right so i have that plane so this becomes my okay either you say one over two 1 over 2 and infinity plane or you can simply write it with the mirror in this 2 2 0 planes you have this all right so notice now that this plane can either go in this direction or it can go in this direction this can go in this direction or it can go in this direction but whichever way it can never move in the direction of the z plane it can never cross part with the z plane all right, so which means this plane is parallel towards the z plane now if you want to plot the direction as well in this case from the origin draw a line which cross cuts any point perpendicular so if i draw this line to this face this is at 90 degrees to the plane so at any point perpendicular to the plane this is now your direction indicate that with a square bracket 
and it becomes the direction of the two two zero plane so i have something like this you might also wish to draw this line perpendicular to this other surface it doesn't seem matter so far it makes an angle of 90 degrees to that plane that's the most important thing you indicate with a square bracket direction of two two zero plane so you have this so that's how you plot your miller indices and their directions now the miller indices can also be a negative form they can also occur in negative form so how do you locate them and also how do you show them on a plane okay let's move over to talk about the negative miller in this i think i need to wipe this board now so let's talk about the negative miller in this how do you represent a miller indices when it is a negative take note you don't write miller indices as let's say for instance minus one minus two and minus three this is completely wrong okay you can't write your miller indices in this manner it doesn't come as minus but if it is negative you change this minus to bar so this can be written as bar one bar two and bar three okay so this is how you write or how you notate your negative miller in this so this simply means that okay your h is simply at where bar one or minus one your k is actually minus two and your l is actually minus three so let's say we're giving this miller index okay let's say we're giving this miller index and we are asked to okay remember this is bad you don't write your uh, miller index like that you simply write like this this is the correct way to notate a negative miller in this okay so let's say we're giving this miller index and we're asked to plot the structure how do you differentiate the negative and the positive when drawing them it's simple the first rules are normal rules you find the intercepts to plot the planes find the intercepts of the planes <coughs> okay find the intercept of the planes the x intercept remember is one all over h this is now equal to h here is what minus one this becomes one all over minus one and that is equal to minus one so this implies that the x intercept is at where bar one take note not minus one but rather bar one you have that also the y intercept is equal to one all over x the k value okay one over k and the k value here is what bar two which can be written as okay one all over in this case you can say bar two you can also say minus two since you're taking your um, fractions it doesn't really matter okay but what matters is the final result this is now equal to one over bar two remains one all over bar two okay so this simply means that your y intercept okay is at one divided by bar two okay so i have something like this okay finally your z intercept is equal to one all over l and l is simply what bar three so this is one divided by bar three which is equal to okay one all over bar three all right so take note um, we don't actually leave negative signs in the denominator so for that reason i can simply transpose this to say my z intercept is equal to bar one all over three because negative signs are not meant to be in the denominator so I think I will also change this towards bar one divided by two. Okay, so take note of that, please. It can be bar one divided by two because you don't leave negative signs at the denominator. So this means now that my plane, the plane simply becomes of uh, the first plane is at bar one. So you have bar one, which is at x now. This is my x intercept. My y intercept is at bar 1 over 2. So I have bar 1 all over 2. And my z intercept is at bar 1 over 3. I have bar 1 all over 3. So this becomes my plane. This is what I'm going to plot now. This is my y intercept and this is my z intercept. So you start by plotting your cubic cell. Okay. Your simple unit cell. You start by plotting your cubic cell. And you have something like this this and this okay
all right so remember i will always call here my positive y i will always call here my positive x and i will always call here my positive z so which means if i am moving backwards is negative from the y if i'm acting downwards is negative from the x if i'm moving to the left is also negative notice that if i call here my origin i can only move upwards positive move in this direction positive move also in this direction positive okay so i need a new origin which will give me what negative integers or negative um, planes so i need a new origin now what origin is that notice that if i call here my origin this is also a three-dimensional plane plane now i can move downwards this is now negative y so which means this is now my negative y i can move in this direction which is against the z the axis so this is now my negative z and i can also move in this direction which is against x so this is my negative x this becomes my counter origin so this origin is for positive the counter origin is for what negative all right so if i want to find by the first intercept which is at x x is at bar one which is minus one remember each distance from the origin is one meters which means if i move from here to this point in the x axis i am moving backwards so this is now what bar one or negative one i will have something like this next up my y intercept is at bar one over two bar one over two has to be the middle of y remember this is now my negative y so middle is somewhere around here this is now bar one all over two I can have something like this and finally on my z intercept i have it to be at bar one over three this is my z intercept from here to this point is one one over three should be somewhere less than one over two so i have it to be somewhere around here this is now bar one all over three that's my z intercept so you can simply join all the points together join this z to y join it to x it's not accurate enough okay it's manageable and join x to y so this becomes my negative so you see the difference now in the negative planes okay so from the origin this is now your origin draw a line to any part of this plane which is perpendicular to the surface this gives you your direction so this is now your direction of the plane so you can use the miller in this in this case two one two three yep one two three plane bar one bar two bar three plane so this becomes your direction and this becomes the plane okay so that's it on negative um negative planes let's draw one more plane then we are good to go let's say we are asked to draw the bar one bar one bar one plane so you have negative one all through bar one bar one plane okay so x is now let's uh, rewrite this a little bit let's take this off okay so let's say we are asked to draw the bar one bar one bar one plane that's negative planes all through x is equal to one over h remember and h stands for what bar one here this is now one all over bar one and this will simply give us bar one so x intercept is at bar one also y is one over k k there is also what bar one this becomes one all over bar one and one divided by bar one will also give us what bar one which means y is also at an intercept of bar one and finally z is one over l l is also bar one this becomes one divided by bar one and one over bar one obviously gives us um, bar one so which means the z intercept is also at bar one hence the planes becomes bar one bar one bar one okay this become my plane so this is the x intercept y intercept and the z intercept so let's locate this on this plane we wipe here a bit and redraw
All right, so let's fall back now to the cube. Remember, we said that if here is my positive origin or the origin that gives me the positive values, then I will need a counter origin to give me what the negative values, and this becomes my counter origin. So this is my negative x, this is my negative z, this is my negative y because this is acting downwards, and this is negative x because it, it now moves to the left instead of moving to the right. It's now moving to the left, so it's negative x. And of course, this is negative z because it now moves inwards instead of coming outwards in this manner. All right, so I want to represent the word by one by one by one plane. Remember from the origin, each distance from origin outwards one meters apart. So which means bar one in the x is simply from here to this point. This is bar one. Also, bar one in the y is simply from here to this point. This is also what bar one. And finally, bar one in the z is also from here to this point. Okay, this is bar one in the z, please. And bar one in the y is simply from here to this point. This is also bar one. So you can now join all these points together. Join these points together. Okay, join these points together. So this becomes the negative plane of 1, 1, 1. All right. This becomes the negative plane of 1, 1, 1. So you might want to shade that. All right. That becomes the negative plane. So if you want to draw the direction, as always, from the origin, draw a line perpendicular to the surface at 90 degrees. So this becomes your origin, your di di direction, sorry. So this direction of bar one, bar one, bar one. So you have this, this becomes your direction and this becomes the plane. All right, so that's it on how to draw your planes from the Miller in this. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how to find the interplanar distances between Miller indices. I will simply give the formula here for interplanar distance and how to find the angle between two planes. I will give the formulas then in the next video, we can start calculations because the video is getting too long already. And I don't want it to happen like that. So I will just give the formulas for interplanar distance, talk about them, talk about the angles between two planes. Then in the next videos, we can now start using them to solve problems. All right. All right. So let's simply talk about the interplanar distance. What are interplanar distance? The distances between each of the planes is what we call interplanar distances. Okay. Given a Miller index, let's say I'm giving a Miller index H, K, and L. Okay, if you plot this on a cubic structure from what we've been doing um, before now, okay, from what we've been doing, so this is your y, this is your x, and this is your z, of course, this shows you 1 over h, intercept on the, uh, intercept on the x is 1 over h, okay, 1 over k, and this is 1 all over l, we have something like this, now distances between Okay, if I have something like this as a one 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 plane, now the distance between each of these planes is what we call interplanar distances. Distances between each of the planes drawn from a Miller index is simply called the interplanar distances. And how do we find the interplanar distances? We will use the formula D, H, K, and L. This stands for distance, and this is equal to A. A is simply called lattice constant. Now take note. What we'll do our next video on material science, we're going to be talking about crystal structures. Okay, distances between an atom, okay, distance from here to this point is called a lattice constant or a lattice parameter, simply A. So distance between each corner atoms is what we call a lattice constant. Therefore, the interplanar distance is the lattice constant all over the square root of the sum of the squares of the individual uh, Miller index. So you have H squared plus K squared plus L squared. So you have this. So D is equal to A in Armstrong. Take note, A is always in Armstrong units. Okay, this, um, this um, the lattice parameter or the lattice constant is always in Armstrong units. So depend on where you're watching from the world, it depends on what your institution wants. But in my own place here, you always convert A to meters. And to convert an Armstrong unit to meters, it is equivalent to um, uh, 0 0.1 nanometer, which you can simply write as 0 0.1 by 10 to the power of minus 9, okay, meter. Okay, you can simply call this. So 
one Armstrong unit is simply 0.1 nanometer or you can write this as 0.1 by 10 to the power of minus 9 in meters in this part of the world so wherever you're watching it depends if you're to leave your um, a in Armstrong units but if you're to convert then you have to convert using this particular conversion so the distances between each of these planes are what we call interplanar distance and of course we use this formula to find any interplanar distance next thing to talk about is called the angle between two planes okay angle between two planes the angle between two planes all right so if you're giving two planes let's say this is h1 k1 and l1 and you're giving another plane and h2 k2 and l2 so the angle between these two planes can be written simply as cos theta is equal to first you find h1 h2 plus finest k1 k2 plus finest l1 l2 if you've obtained this multiple h to h k to k l to l all over okay you find now the square root of their individual um miller indices the square of their individual miller indices so this becomes h squared h1 squared plus k1 squared plus l1 squared okay the whole of this plus the square root of the other um, miller indices which is h2 all squared plus k2 all squared plus l2 all squared all right so if you're able to find this and of course you take the cost inverse of this value you get the angle between these two planes all right so that is it on interplanar distance and of course angle between planes in the next video we are now going to do calculations of interplanar distances and of course the angle between two planes i hope to see you in that video thanks and cheers please do well to like this video share comment and of course um subscribe to the channel if you're new i will see you in the next video thanks and cheers